Okay, so today we're talking about our swivels. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy unpacked for you real quick. Here we go, ta-da. And you'll see it's got a bunch of baggies and there's a bunch of little things going on. So first, I found these. These are international chargers, not super important at the time. So we're gonna go ahead and put those guys away. Now we do have three other baggies going on. So we're gonna look at those really quickly. So next is the one on the opposite side that left. Let's go ahead and put this away. And this has our little adapters. Wait for it, boom. So that way we can actually see what um, size thickness device. So we're probably gonna have to use one of the larger ones and use our iPads that are provided by our work uh, without one of these guys. If you notice those are different thicknesses. And then we have the little neck band um, that our remote goes on. Ta-da, see here's the remote clicked in and you can wear it around your neck like I'm currently doing in this video. It's all right, and that way it tracks your other room. So those are just different spacer guides. They click out and you'll see where they slide into the swivel. Next we have this bag. These are important cables. Okay, so we have adapters that look like USB-C to lightning for our iPads. We also have a USB-C to USB-C if we're using a Samsung device. And then we have a USB on one side and it has a small round port on the other. That is actually to charge the robot itself. Next, we're taking a look at how this actually looks when it's set up. So it comes with a tripod base. Please ignore my wire mess. It comes with a tripod base. It just screws into the bottom of that tripod base like a camera, kind of. You can leave it sitting on a desk. That would be perfectly fine. If you look on the back side, there's a space for our USB-C. That's what we're going to plug into our tablet. So if you're using an Apple product, use the white one. And if you're using a Android product, you would use the black cable. Down here, we see we have the charger cable. There we go. We also have this USB cable. That's gonna look like just this big round long guy, about a 30 foot cable. That is gonna plug into our actual laptop that's our host computer. So that could either be like how I have mine in a dongle here or directly into your device. And then this is where our remote was previously located. And I did have to take the iPad out of the case because no way would it fit in the case with any of the spacers. Let me go ahead and adjust so you can see. Spacer goes in right there. When we have to move it, we would just give this guy a slide to the right, and that lets us go ahead and unclick and hit that in there. So that way we can actually like adjust the size of it. Yeah, I'm surprised I did that with one hand. All right, and then that lets our iPad then sit up on this little tray. However, I had it, one sec. Boom. You take this remote out of the back side where it charges, and now we see the front side of this. I'm gonna go ahead and click this guy on. So now you should be looking at something like this, where we have our computer and we have our iPad hosting. And if I go into our iPad settings, let me go ahead and click the swivel. I've already done this setup process to put this all together. We walk through that in IT. Basically, we download that swivel app. We're going to sign in with our Google and it's going to connect. Notice, if we are not connected with the very long chunky cable to a host device, we will not see the option to stream a Google Meet. It will gray out. We'll only get the option to pre-record a lesson. Now, when we choose stream a Google Meet, it's gonna basically switch me from the Swivel app into the um, Google Meet application. So then we're just using the regular old Google Meets application. So I'll go ahead and pan to a little bit of a video where I had that going. I could take a look. I have a Google Meet open on my computer. And I also have my Google Meet open on this iPad. That's gonna be for two reasons. One, this is gonna give you a functionality to actually read the chat because doing that on the app over here is very challenging. Two, um, just so you have the full features of the Meet. All right, we are wired to it, but these are actually, I'm in the Meet twice rather than just being in the meet from here. Otherwise I'd have to facilitate the entire classroom right there and that's kind of challenging. So just know that when you go into that with the swivel. And then of course we can take our little, this guy, hit go. When I hit the middle button, it turns on and now it'll actually follow me throughout the classroom. So if I take a look at the screen, we'll watch it follow me. That's my iPad turning to follow me. I wanted to close doing some practical applications, but also wearing the device real quick. Um, I use this mostly if I'm making videos ahead of time for my students. We can have it run a Google Meet, especially if we were gonna be hybrid. I can go ahead and click on this remote from the side here for a power button and sync it up to a Google Meet, do all that. It does take a little, uh, a second to pre-sync, right? So that it like is in the right way before you turn that on. 
I do recommend having it open on your computer and then also the iPad so it looks like you're in the Meet twice, just because it's easier to interact with the chat via your computer versus Google Meet on an iPad. You should be able to hear me just fine because this little remote that I'm wearing around my neck um, has a built-in microphone. So that way, even if we are 10, 15 feet and I get smaller and smaller away from this device, it's still going to hear me because of the microphone pickup here. If I want it to stop tracking me or start tracking me, either one, we push this center button and right now it's on tracking off. So if I'm stuck inside this frame, it's not gonna move side to side with me. Let's say I wanted to go to my piano over here or I wanted to go over there to where my percussion instruments are. I could click that tracking on and then it will end up following me as I move over, right? I'll judge my messy room. So it would be great, especially if we're doing something at a board like this, right? We can have that camera following us if we get it so that we're like right in the frame where we wanna be. And then I can freeze it right there. And then now it'll stay focused on this board. Also, if we have students at home and we're like, hey, this is your bell work, go ahead and take a look at this for a minute. We can make that our main screen and put that up there. So just some sort of practical applications for using it. Um, it is a little weird once you get going with it. And it's kind of weird seeing yourself like this on the screen all the time, but it is pretty straightforward and easy to use. If you have questions though, feel free to ask me. Um, and I hope this video helped you not be scared of using this device because it's kind of cool um, and definitely could be helpful in a hybrid setting. And then of course, if we're recording a video ahead of time, we have that little button on the side that's like a red record button. Same way, that'll work to just turn this video off from a distance so we don't have that awkward footage of me walking up to my iPad to turn it off. So hopefully this helped. Let me know if there's anything more I can do.